I'd like to greet everyone with the peace of Lord Jesus and I'd like to express my joy for seeing my brethren once again. I stayed with you for a long while and for the ones that just arrived here during my absence, I want to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord and also the, the ones who are on YouTube in the service. I hope that they are also blessed. Just before I say anything, I want to inform the church that the Lord has told us, has revealed to us that at this moment, when the praise group was singing Shekinah, the Lord operated a miracle here. You came here seeking a miracle, take possession of it. I receive, Lord, I receive the miracle. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. I'm going to open the word in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. It's going to be here in the projection. Chapter 17 of Acts. Acts is first book after the four Gospels in the New Testament. It's chapter 17. We're going to read a couple of verses after verse 23. Acts 17. The first chapter of Acts 17, 23. And the word of the Lord says, For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor he is worshipped with man's hands as though he is, as though he needed anything, since he gives life to all breath in all things. He gives life breath in all things. And he was made from the blood every nation of man to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling so that they should seek him, the Lord, in the hope that they might grope him for him. He's not far from each one of us. Lord, you know what we need, Lord. You know who has walked into these doors of this church, Lord. We pray that you can give us a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone can be seated. <clears throat> We're going to be giving this word today, tonight, because we've we received a revelation from the Lord. And I would like to inform the church just as i have just done that the lord he has revealed to us while before the service we were seeking we were seeking god and praying and he told us what he was going to do tonight in this service he is going to operate a blessing in a home in specific a, a home that is living in a situation of duality of, of two different sides that they are living and he wants to operate a blessing in this family and God also operated, uh, showed that tonight in this service, everyone that is here is before the operation and the power of the blood of Jesus. And over us is going to shine a very bright light that comes from heaven and is the revelation of God for our lives. And God, he even told us still that there is a person here tonight that this man needs to make a decision and he has to make this decision and God told you this man that has to make this decision God is saying take this decision before it is too late and this is what God has showed us for tonight and his word as we are going to meditate we're going to we're going to pray that everything is coming from God so that we can be blessed here tonight and so the text that we read tonight, this text talks about an interesting moment of a, a great man in the Bible of God. He was transformed by God through an experience that he had while he was on the path of Damascus. And I'm talking about the Apostle Paul. He is a man. He was, he w he was a centurion. He had power over um, soldiers, Roman soldiers. He was Jewish and he loved God. And because of God, he, he did whatever he, he could for God. But one day, um, he had a different experience. He was going on his way to Damascus where there was a people 
there that was worshiping and glorifying, glorifying the name of the Lord. And when we talk about the, the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, this, this gospel that we live, that Jesus is coming back, and they, these people, they were, ta- they were the people of the way. And Paul, Paul, he had, he had commitment with the Lord, with God, the one that he worshipped. He didn't have commitment with any people, but just God. And as he was approaching Damascus, he had asked um, his superiors to give him a, a letter so that he would just stop with the people that were called the way. He was going to put an end to those people through this letter that he was going to write. And so Paul, he left with this, um, with this purpose to kill and destroy all of those who were announcing this new life in Jesus. And so Paul, he didn't, he, before he met God, he, he fought the opposite purpose. And so he was going on this path and on him shone a very bright light and he fell onto the floor. And the, the centurion, this man that he was, was no longer. He, he thought he knew everything. But and then the voice of God said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute? Why do you persecute me? And then Saul said, um, God said to Saul, I am God, whom you persecute. And so God, He spoke to Saul, and from that moment on, his his life was transformed. And so, God, He renamed him as the apostle of the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are us. We were reached by the grace of God, by the eternal gospel. And God has revealed this to us through the, the signs of, and operations of miracles in our midst. And so Paul, he starts doing his mission, his true mission before. Um, and he started um, going on apostolic missions. He, start, he started to preach the word, the real living word, to um, places all over the world. And he was in Greece. And, and in Greece, what they believed in is they believed in multiple gods. There's a god of the water. There's a god of the sky. There's a god of the sea. There's a god of the, the, the land. And so it was a God with the lowercase g because the capital G is just our God. So they worship gods with the lowercase g. And this whole city worshiped all these different Greek gods. And he noticed that there was multiple altars dedicated to each of the gods that they worshiped. So there was an altar for the God of the sun. There was an altar for the God of the moon. So altars for each of the gods in which they believed in and worshipped. But one thing he caught his attention while he was seeing all of these different altars. He saw one in specific that uh, that touched his heart and, and bothered his heart. There was nothing on the altar, nothing inside of the altar. It was an empty altar. And then there... You know, all the other altars had names and and had a specific God that it was um, targeted. uh, And the Holy Spirit started talking upon that moment when he saw that empty altar. You know, and and back in the time, back at that time, there was philosophers and there were people that would um, argue and, and debate over religion. And so this was an, an area in which people would de- de- have these debates about their gods and about their different gods. And so Paul, he entered the situation. He asked God for a word. And since he was in the revelation, he was in the way of the Lord, God, he revealed to Paul. And when God reveals, no one can get in, that, in the way of God. When God reveals his will, no one can impede that because he is sovereign he is powerful over everything else and so paul in that moment he he asks god for a word he asks god for a direction revelation he paul said that while he was going through the city he was he found all these different altars to different gods but paul he found this one altar in specific that was empty And on this altar was the inscription 
to the unknown God. And in that moment, Paul said, this God, this unknown God that you are worshiping without even knowing is the God that I serve. It's the God that I worship. It's the God that has made all of these things, the heavens, the earth, and everything that is in it. It's the all-powerful, all-worthy God. He transforms man. He operates miracles. He saves man. And through the, um, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, this is the God that you are referring to in this empty altar. And so Paul started talking to these people, and a lot of people accepted these words that he was saying, and a lot didn't. And today, we are living this exact same thing. We are living this same situation. The situation of the world that the world is living is the situation that Paul found in Greece. The exact situation. What is happening today? How many people are here tonight? Right? If you look around, how many people are here in this church tonight? And what if I told to the brothers and sisters that a lot of people that are here serve their own per their own God? You know, some people serve money, the God of money, the God of, of, of work, you know, the God of culture. You... You, didn't even, you don't even have to make a, uh, an altar for this God, but your heart is filled with this. And so tonight, here, in this place, our God, the only God, the sovereign God, the all-powerful God, the God who transforms man and operates miracles, who is operating here in this night, who operated through the song, a miracle, who is going to operate for this man that is here to make this decision that he has to take, the God that has poured out over us, water and blood and this cloud of power over us it's a god of the trinity the son the father and the holy spirit tonight god is telling us that we need to make a definition we need to make a decision we have to make a, a spiritual definition because there is a heaven that is waiting for the church there is an eternity that is waiting for the church. There is a faithful church that knows and that has had experiences with the living word. It, this is the faithful church. The faithful church, it's in me, it could be in you, but only the faithful church is going to go to heaven one day to live forever with our Lord and God. We must live the gospel that we teach and that we preach. And tonight, God is talking to you, to your heart. He's saying that I am the only God that can change your life. I am the only God that I can solve that problem that you have that man cannot solve. You know, what money hasn't solved, what your profession hasn't solved, what your social status hasn't solved, I can do for you because I can do everything. It's the only God that we have. It's a God that loves us. It's a God that we worship. It's the God that we glorify, that we play, we sing praises to. We pray to this God, to our God. And this operation of faith that has substance, it's, it's radical. It's from up and down. And God, He is doing in this way. He is bringing power in miracles from eternity coming up and down in our midst. And if you have not, if you have not known about this God, if you don't know this God, it's this God that I'm preaching about. And Paul, he, he had an encounter with this God on the path of Damascus. He was someone who persecuted the church and then God changed his life. He was a military, he had power. And now, after he had an encounter with the Lord, he left all of that so that he could be in the God's presence, in the presence of our Savior. And this is the God that we glorify and that we adore. He's the only God that is sovereign, that is all-powerful and over everything. He's working in your heart, in my heart. He's working on us so that we can one day go to eternity and live with him forever. And this is the God that is worthy of our praise. We don't even have to clap our hands. We don't have to jump around, run around, dance. No, he knows our hearts. He knows our minds. And he goes into our hearts. He opens our hearts so that we can understand that he operates miracles yesterday, today, and forever. This is the God that we serve. 
He, this is the God that we serve and that we adore with all of our hearts. Only He is sovereign. Let's sing a praise.
nosso Deus é our God. This is our God. He is uncomparable. He is sovereign. He's This is the one that Paul is speaking about. He has done he has made everything and everything that is in the world. He has made heavens and the and the earth. Nothing is made from the hands of man. God has made everything and he wants to operate in, in the intimacy of our hearts. Has did the man make the heart? No, this was God. God made our hearts. And when we open our hearts to Him is when He can operate a miracle in our lives. When the praise group was singing a song, God was operating a miracle. And He spoke to this man that has to make this decision. The decision has to be made today so that your life can be transformed. He has already operated miracles and wonders. In the middle of our church, He has given us water and blood. And the power, the cloud of power over the church is His power. This is the God that we worship. This is the God that we're going to worship here, at home, at our job. And we're going to worship Him forever. Until we go forever to live with Him in eternity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to have a word of glorification to this God. Lord God, we glorify Your name because you are the God of the universe. You have saved us, God. We are sinners. We are not worthy, but you have saved us. Glory and praised be your name because we love you with all of our hearts. Praise be your name forever. Amen. Lord God, we are eternally grateful for this night, for this message, for your word, for everything that your spirit has operated and is operating in our lives and over all of those people who still don't know you. We thank you because your grace was poured out over our lives and your power was manifested. Your love was revealed in our hearts and in our lives. Everyone who is here tonight, in your name we say that your marvelous grace of your son Jesus the love of God the Father, and the operations of the Holy Spirit can be over us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Everyone can be seated. Amen. Beloved, we're here. The brethren are here. If you desire an assistance, a prayer, I'm just going to tell you that if the, the, the brothers that are going to pray for you, they're not going to tell you another message. They're just going to pray for you. And if you desire to receive an assistance to have a prayer, just go ahead and raise your hand or ask the person next to you to raise their hands for you so that you can receive a prayer and God can speak even more to your heart. And we're going to have our period of assistance. The, the service is not over yet. It's only over after we complete this um, period of assistance because God can still operate miracles. So we just, we're going to have everyone here, all the youth, all the youth, the, the deacons, the pastors are going to come up here and wait for you. We're going to be at your disposal. Give us a signal. We're going to pray for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. 